Hey there, Clarifiles and Clarifilettes. This is the second installment of our mouthpiece series. In the first installment, we talked about the mouthpiece and the musical sound phrase element of pitch. In this one, we're going to talk about color and stability. If you're interested in that, hang on. There's a lot of information that will follow. What about color and stability in the clarinet mouthpiece? Let's take color first. The thing that determines color more than any other element of the mouthpiece is the baffle and the baffle contour. Here are some samples of different baffle shapes. As you can see, you can have a ski slope type baffle. You can have a scoop, deep scoop type baffle. Or you can have a straight baffle. And each one of these will give you different characteristics in terms of the color and also in terms of the power of the sound, but mainly with the color. Of course, the deep scoop baffle, especially when it's accompanied by a scoop that goes not just straight down the mouthpiece, but also from side to side, so it's bowl shaped, that's going to give you, you know, a very deep, very resonant and flexible sound. Uh, again, it comes with its negative properties, but a lot of players uh, really like that. The straighter the baffle, generally speaking, the more powerful the sound, and also the color is going to be a little bit brighter. And the ski slope baffle gives you quick response, but if you do too much of it, it's very easy to get reeds to whistle and squeak. So uh, those are basically the three basic baffle types. The primary determining factor in stability in the mouthpiece is the width of the chamber. And what do I mean by that? I mean how far those sidewalls are apart. Is there an absolute measurement for that? No, not exactly. One of the guys I worked with on mouthpieces, uh, the way he determined the width of a, of a mouthpiece in terms of, uh, uh, in, in an absolute sense, was with a popsicle stick that he had sanded down and he would drop it down the baffle to see how wide the chamber was. But when we're talking about selecting mouthpieces, one, say, that might have more concentration, more focus, more stability than the other, what you're going to be doing is basically holding up the mouthpieces, looking at them on the far end, looking up through the chamber to see which of these mouthpieces has the widest chamber. Normally, the wider the chamber, the less concentrated and less focused the sound's going to be, and the more flexible it's going to be. But remember, flexibility comes with its negative side in the fact that when there's flexibility, it's something you had to control. And for a classical clarinet player, that's a very serious consideration because most classical clarinet players want equipment to help them preserve the pitch color shape envelope pitch color shape envelope above all things above all things so the narrower the chamber when you're looking up those side walls closer and closer together the more focused and concentrated concentrated the sound is going to be and also the more it's going to actually get out there to the audience it's also give you will give you a lot of stability so behind your nose you'll have a little more flexibility to move the sound around without worrying about the pitch color shape envelope rupturing, whether you're playing at a higher dynamic level or whether you're playing at a softer dynamic level. So those are the things that control, that primarily control uh, the color of the sound, that's the baffle, and then also give you the shape of the sound and also provide the stability that you need to control the pitch color shape envelope in dynamic changes. And next time we're going to be talking about our old friend response and resistance. I say old friend response and resistance because they're really basically one thing. So I speak of them often in the singular. I guess like Einstein talked about 
time-space continuum as one thing. So response and resistance next time, and in the meantime, happy clarinetting.